my experience with Caesar is that he's very immature emotionally, uh, intellectually. Um, um, I, I found him to be a 14 year old in an adult body. Uh, he got arrested on a number of occasions for uh, ridiculous things, things that uh, showed some problems with his ability to conform to society. So we're now entering the, the, the tail end of the disinformation stage, for lack of a better term of what it's called. But the guy you just saw, his name is uh, Ronald Lowy. This is what's called a, a, a crises operative, a crises manager. All right, well, if, you, if you guys are old enough to remember the Seth Rich case back in 2016, you remember that? Remember that shit with Seth Rich? He was a, um, they had all those uh, operatives, the Bellman and Bauman. You remember those guys that came in and they surrounded the family and they told they tried to take control of the case, right? They tried to take control of the case and steer it into a ditch, right? Because it's, it's all about disinformation. It's all about, it's not about the evidence. You're not seeing any evidence. All the FBI has said is that, oh, we got a fingerprint on a piece of tape and we got some DNA. But now what they're doing is the, the, the major media um, is pushing the story that he's crazy, right? And they have an attorney, guy, pseudo attorney. His name is, again, Ronald Lowy. I did the full research. You're going to, this is, this might be a little messy because it's coming so fast. Uh, I go through the um, the actual. Uh, you, you'll hear La Lowy in his own words. I found a few videos of him. Do yourself a favor and watch this all the way through, because not only are you doing yourself a favor, but you're doing me a favor. That that we can confirm that what we're seeing is 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 accurate. Right, so, so the Patsy the Patsy is now isolated in a in a probably in a jail cell. He doesn't know if it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, it's night, day. They got him so confused he doesn't know what, what's going on anymore, right? So and right now they're outside the, disinforming the public, right? And they're surrounding his family, which is interesting in that they're gonna try to they're gonna try to get his family to convince the the guy, you know, uh Cesar Cesar Sadiq the bomber, that he's crazy. And they're going to try to get him to, to cop a plea because they don't want this to go to trial. If this goes to trial, we're going to eventually hear, uh, we'll hear the, the accused bomber in his own words say, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, something like that, right? So um, these guys are good. I mean, this is, this is, the, um, this is the, the, the high end of a PSYOP, right? Where that... There's no evidence, so now they attack the public, the, the public's intelligence, and try to confuse the story to, to convince you that what you're seeing is not what you're seeing. Say he's crazy, right? His own attorney is saying he's crazy, right? Which is crazy in itself. This guy, Ronald Low Lowy, is what he's trying to do is he's now in, it's, he's inserting himself into the storyline, right? He's coming from out of nowhere, and you'll see that the guy is well-funded, he he works for for an organization called Crescent Heights Company, which is twelve billion dollars in in um, in uh, past revenue. Huge, huge real estate developer in Florida, and backed by all the major banks, the 10, 12, 15 banks, not only national banks but international banks. So you could see where the money is coming from. Follow the money flow from. It's always the banks. It's always the banks funding this shit, right? So the banks are now, there's even a, a, a you're going to see if you follow it all the way through, you'll see a, a comment that was made in the post that they're trying to say that that's, um, the bomber was, he was so, he was afraid of banks. They actually say that, that he was afraid of banks and he used to carry his savings around with him, right? So, so the banks fund the operation. What is the operation? It's to smear the it's to smear Trump and the Republican Party before the the November sixth election. 
But they're already, there's like seven days to go, right? Ten days to go, not even, whatever. Right? It's all fake election anyway, but it's manufacturing the consent so that they can steal the election away from the very evil Republicans, right? That's the idea. That's the operation, right? Is it working? It's working. What are we talking about? We're talking about a fucking fake bomber. Right? It works. It, we've been gaslighted, but we have no other choice under the circumstances than to push back, right? Everybody has to push back. You've got you to push back the story. The story was with Seth Rich. I mean, this is almost like, 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 um, like a, a, you know, a, a rubber stamp of that case where the crises operators came in, surrounded the family, and then got the family to make a stupid video how, how sorry they were and, and, and how sick he is. And the guy hasn't even had a trial yet. We haven't even heard a voice yet. We haven't seen any evidence. No, guilty before proven innocent. Right? He's guilty. Now he's got to prove his innocence. That's where we're at right now. If you watch the video all the way through, you'll see the crises operator, Lowy, now coming on strong. He's trying to insert himself into the picture and actually become uh, Cesar Syak's lawyer, right? That's what he's trying to do, right? He wants to, re he's representing the family theory, a mother and two sisters. And the younger sister is, is, um, is giving testimony to, to the, they're communicating with the Times, the New York Times. They're communicating with CNN. They're communicating with the, uh, the New York Post got a piece. Everybody, they're out there spewing, they're spewing the, the hate towards the, towards the guy, the alleged crazy bomber, right? With no evidence, you know, and a lot of people have said like in Florida, would, would a van like that have lasted driving around on the streets without getting, you know, firebombed or rocks thrown at it or make some kind of ruckus or a hundred people would see that van driving by and how many uh, traffic cameras would have caught that on film, Right. There's no evidence, nothing, nothing. There's also a theory. Someone said that there's, that there, there was actually photographic evidence of two vans instead of one. I have not seen that, but I would like to see that. Um, so this is really heating up. So kindly watch through. You're going to see three videos of, of uh, Lowy, the, the now conclusion, conclusively, the crises, he's not a crises actor. Let's not use that word because crises actor is when someone at a crime scene is acting as if they're a victim. That's not what this is. This is crises management where Democratic or Republican operatives, they're, they're all deep state operatives, are inserted into the picture. They're well-funded, they're well-financed. And now they, what they, their objective is not only to spin the story on the outside, but also spin the story on the inside and get very close to the target, which is which is the the, the pseudo bomber, the the, the make believe bomber himself, right? So um, so you'll see the three videos of uh, Lowy speaking. You'll see my uh, breakdown of the of the, um, the what's available right now in terms of mainstream media print, and I go through all that. I threw some of his. Um, character videos on there as well i threw the one where he's swimming in the water and the fucking right and uh what was the other one when he's when he's the, the, he's in the nightclub selling his wares uh, again my gut feeling is that the guy's a, he's a patsy but he's i don't i know a lot of speculation are uh, saying that he's an implant that he's he's somehow he's an operative of the cia i i, I fundamentally disagree i think that he was made a deal Right, and what is that deal? Now the deal expands because they're very close to his family. Right, he might like his sister, although he claims he hasn't had any contact with three or four years. That's now the right, and now the mother and they're, they're trying to call him crazy. He's 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 emotionally unstable. He's got the brain of a fourteen-year-old. They're saying all this shit about him. Right, they haven't seen him in four years. Right, he he took off. I'm out of here. These people are crazy. <laughs> they're probably crazy. Right, the family, and so. So now, so now he's, he's, you know, they're trying to frame him as crazy and they got this operative stepping in. It's so important to, 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 to know what's going on, right? This is like, it's classic where the, the operative is inserted into the storyline 
and tries to manipulate the story from the outside. So from here, you'll then see the the family come out publicly. You'll see more more face, right? And the election is just going to come and go, right? There's not going to be any action on this whatsoever. After the election, it'll it'll just they're not going to release any evidence. The the damage is done. The the game is game on. The object is to keep the attention on how crazy he is and and his support for Trump, if that's what this means, right? Right? They're, they're trying to, to frame him as a Republican kook, a right wing kook. Right? Now we know that these these rights and lefts that doesn't really exist anymore, right? Because the moral of the story is it's us against them, right? It's it's the ninety nine percent against the one percent, the banks, right? Ten percent Ten banks are funding this operation again, right? So enjoy the videos. I'm going to do more. I'll, I'll stay on, but kindly hit the subscribe button. If you haven't done it yet, hit it. If you're already subscribed, don't, don't hit it again because you'll unsubscribe. But stay with the story and kindly comment and, and feel free to drop information into the uh, comments. I do read the comments. I, I There's a lot of them, but I read, I, I skim the comments. And if you throw something in there valid, I'll follow it up, right? And if it's very important or if it's if it's breaking news, send it to my email address, shorthappylife at gmail.com. My name is Marcus Conti reporting. My name is Ron Lowy. I'm the attorney for the family of Caesar Sayoc. Uh, I've previously represented Caesar Sayoc on four cases. Um, my experience with Caesar is that he's very immature emotionally, uh, intellectually. Um, um, I, I found him to be a 14-year-old in an adult body. Uh, he got arrested on a number of occasions for uh, ridiculous things, things that uh, showed some problems with his ability to conform to society. Um, we tried to get him mental treatment. The family loves him, has encouraged him, uh, has argued with him. Sadly, he has refused. Uh, it led to the point that he uh, disassociated himself, he estranged himself from his family. Uh, he's been living in a vehicle for the past three years and his family was shocked to learn yesterday uh, that he was charged with being this bomber. And uh, they're going through pain, uh, they're going through anger, they're angry at him, uh, they're hurt, they're sad, uh, they're, they're embarrassed. Uh, they, they feel so bad for the families and the victims who uh, were the targets of these of these bombs. Um, the mother is an active Democrat. She believes in community service. She sits on local boards in this community. She loves America. And uh, she couldn't in her wildest dreams imagine that her son could commit such an act. Um, this case uh, is a statement about our lack of mental health in America. We need to look to the future and we need to do more to treat people when we begin to see signs of mental health deterioration. We shouldn't have to wait until someone gets this sick and commits this act before we pay attention. We have a problem in America that needs to be addressed. We've seen the pictures of the van with the, the pro-Trump signage plastered all over it, anti-CNN signage, etc. When you knew him, did he seem politically active? Did, did the subject of politics come up at all? Because we understand he didn't get registered um, until I think it was 2016, Drew Griffin said. Just the opposite. He had no interest in politics then. Uh, his mother confirmed to me he had never voted this afternoon. He never had an interest uh, in, in any type of political issues. His interest was more uh, uh, bodybuilding, um, uh, 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 nighttime nightclub events. It, it was a lifestyle of a, of a, of a, of a teenager, someone who, who didn't have their priorities in order. So do you know why he all of a sudden became, um, whether he was politically, I don't know if politically active is the right word, but certainly uh, engaged uh, with the, certainly, you know, the Trump presidency, going to rallies, driving around in that van, plastering his van. Do you know, do you have any sense of why that happened? Well, I have my opinion. I mean, obviously, I don't know with certainty, but it's my opinion. 
that he was attracted uh, to the uh, Trump uh, uh, formula of reaching out, Trump reaching out to these types of uh, outsiders, people who don't fit in, people who are angry at America, uh, telling them that they have a place at the table, telling them that it's okay to get angry. I, I believe that uh, that was a motivating factor. Do I blame the president solely? No, this is a sick individual. I, I actually blame all of us. We have to start arranging for treatment of people when we start to see the problems. We don't have to wait for it to become violent. We're not socializing these people when we recognize signs like living in vans or, or, or doing stupid actions like threatening a power company. We need a socialization plan to work on these people that are outsiders. It doesn't require uh, uh, psychiatrists and expensive doctors. It requires community involvement. It's interesting, though. I mean, early on, you said he sort of embraced the idea that he was Native American, even though I believe there's there's no evidence. I mean, the family uh, says that there's no evidence. I mean, he actually wasn't of uh, Native American descent. Um, but now, something about this last election that became the uh, the focus of whatever his resentment or anger or whatever his emotional problems were. That's what you believe. Well, 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 he was clearly not Native American. His father was Filipino and abandoned him as a child, and his mother is Italian. And uh, he adopted this claim to being a Seminole because he was trying to create an identity. And if you asked me, again, my layman's opinion, is that uh, manifested from his lack of a father and his desire for an identity. This was someone lost. And do you he was think looking now... For anything. And he found and, a father. And, he found a father in Trump. You believe that this was sort of a quest for identity, and this was just the latest iteration of that. Going to a rally, attacking CNN, um, you know, attacking the those who have criticized Trump. That's correct. I agree with that. I spoke with Ronald Lowy, who is an attorney who currently represents Sayoc's mother and stepsisters. He also once represented the suspect in another bombing incident. Mr. Lowy, thanks for joining us. You've represented Caesar Sayoc before. What was your personal experience with him like? He was charismatic. Uh, he seemed very immature, very young. Uh, his, his thinking process seemed limited. Um, he was not a difficult client. He got himself into difficult problems for what I saw was childish behavior, uh, whether it was falsifying an identification ID card and changing the year of his birth, um, a shoplifting case, um, and even the case where he was charged with uh, threatening FPL, uh, saying that he was going to blow it up. Once you looked at the facts, they, they just seemed like someone who was emotionally out of control, but not someone who would uh, manifest those actions, who would actually go out and, and, and plan uh, to, to bomb an establishment. Do you believe he was mentally ill or is mentally ill? I believe he's been mentally ill from the time I met him, uh, but I don't believe that he had violent uh, 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 tendencies at that moment. In other words, I think that over the 16 years since that particular case, I think his condition has worsened. He became estranged from his family. Um, he wasn't even political then. As a matter of fact, uh, according to uh, his mom, his sisters, he never voted in an election to their knowledge. And uh, she was unaware he even got a voter's card finally in 2016. In the time that you've known him, is there something you can see that you can point to that may have triggered all of this? In his childhood, I think the initial thing that occurred is his father abandoned him. His father was Filipino, went back to the Philippines, uh, had no more contact with him. And I think at some early age, he began to fantasize that he had a background, that he was a Seminole Indian, a Native American, and he wanted an identity. He wanted uh, a father figure. And uh, he finally apparently found the father figure in 2016. And where did he find that father figure? Uh, sadly, he found it in Donald Trump. And you think his political views are in large part the reason that he carried out these actions? I don't think there's any doubt that that occurred. 
Ronald Lowy, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for your insight. You're welcome. Now, I'm not sure about the father figure part mm -hmm. of this, but it's definitely clear that in in case after case of people committing violence on a, on a grand scale in this country, there are underlying psychological issues. Yeah, definitely mental health issues that they saw over time become worse. Yes. Yeah, such a history, too, of, of crimes and other things as well. So here's the first article. It started on October 28th. Today is the 30th. All right. So it started on Sunday night. The New York Times releases this piece trying to frame the shooter as a psychopath, as a, as a desperate individual, someone in need of mental health. A strange family of Cesar Sayak. Bombing suspect wants him to get help. New York Times reporting. There's the van. You see the van. We all saw the images of the van up on the flatbed. These are the two guys that wrote the article. Two people on the 28th. The estranged family of Cesar Sayak, the drifter, calling him a drifter, accused of mailing more than a dozen bombs to critics of President Trump, tried to pl plead with him on Sunday to accept mental health care and hire a proficient lawyer to represent him in the case, which could lead to his imprisonment for decades. I thank God he hasn't hurt anybody. Tina Volasana, Volasana, Mr. Sayak's youngest sister, said in an interview, the first extended public remarks by a close relative since Sayak was arrested on Friday. Tina Villasana also looked for Christina Villasana because they like to get the names a little, a little mixed up. The family's attempted intervention came the day before Sayak was scheduled to appear before a federal judge in Miami, approximately four years after a, a, a rupture that distanced Sayak from his mother and two sisters. He hasn't talked to his family in four years. Suddenly they're, they're coming running to the rescue. The family made an appeal to Sayak in a handwritten card that enter, this is the guy right here, enter crises guy. Ronald Lowy, a longtime lawyer for the family, tried to deliver to Mr. Syak at the detention center on Sunday. Mr. Lowy said the card asked Syak to trust professionals and not listen to just anyone because there are a lot of people who will try to take advantage of him at this time. Lowy, who represented Syak occasionally in the past, said to the family said of family members. Despite the lack of con contact and all of these years, they love him. All of these years, they love him. And they only want to make sure he gets the help he needs. How Syak will respond to any entries, entreaties that reach him is unclear. According to his sister and other relatives, Lowry, um, as, as well as Lowry, Mr. Syak has long resisted suggestions that he seek care for anything that they believe contribute to years of fanatical and most often unrealistic ambitions, bleak finances, and sporadic criminal conduct. I'll roll slow so you could read it as well if you want to later. All right. So, what else? Mr. Syak has a proactive history of largely minor skirmishes. Right. What else? It's unclear if Syak will contest the charges. So here we go. We got his sister running to the rescue. Mr. Syak's family, they came to believe that he struggled with dyslexia. He clashed with his parents over behavior. So what? clashed with they're trying to make him out to be a child after he left college apparently without completing his degree then he tried to make a point that he's a, a flunky the siblings maternal grandmother who lived in Hollywood took Syak in against the mother's will All right. a runaway they're trying to All right. he's always in the kitchen they try to make him into a Oh, a, a uh, steroid addict somewhere in here. Yeah, uh, believed his grandmother believed that he had a stash of steroids. Uh, 
this is the um, this is uh, apparently the bar or something that he worked in men's club in West Palm Beach Mr. Sayak gradually withdrew even more from family as, according to his sister, he just started getting weirder. He was regularly invited to family gatherings for Thanksgiving and Christmas. He did not usually show up. Here's interesting. He didn't trust banks. <laughs> um, they worried about his safety and well-being, especially after he lost... His home to foreclosure saw his fi finances dwindle to the point that he declared bankruptcy and started distrusting banks so much that he would carry his savings with him in a silver briefcase. About four years ago, Sayak's mother, a successful entrepreneur and prominent figure in the Condominium Association, gave him an ultimatum about his need for help. So that's New York Times. This is the uh, Post, New York Post reporting. All right. Family lawyer for suspected male bomber says he might be crazy. There he is in a Make America Great Again hat. They're really killing this guy. The family lawyer, here he is again. The, the thing I found most interesting here is that uh, that's different is this line right here. Larry, see this guy, right? This guy is trying to position himself as the lawyer. What we intend to do is raise his competency, said the lawyer. We're in need of comp competency, determination, before he's even transferred to New York. So they're going to send him to New York to be tried. Lowry has been asked to represent Syak by the man's estranged family. But he has not yet to he has yet to see Syak to confirm his representation. So he's trying to stick himself in there. The attorney was tapped by Syak's family because he was represented he has represented Syak multiple times in the past. Lowry said he is concerned that Syak's mental health has de de deteriorated since the last time he saw him a year and a half ago. Okay, so this is the this is a very startling line, right? Lowry said he does not plan to request bail given the severity of the charges. What kind of lawyer doesn't request bail for your client? That's a that's a real tell right there. Lowry said he does not if if he's the lawyer, does not plan to request bail. A New York federal defender who has also been listed at Syak's attorney, did not immediately respond. Good. So they already gave him a, a lawyer out in, um, in New York. Let's see what else we got. Here's another article. This is by <laughs> Democratic Gazette. <laughs> and here he is in court. He went to court. He didn't speak. I think the most um, interesting line here is that he made eye contact with his sister, and apparently he said, I love you. Uh, so who is, who is Ronald S. Lowy, the attorney trying to stick him in there, right? Let's read his bio first. Managing partner, uh, a law firm specializes in federal and state litigation, tried more than 100 jury trials in the state and federal courts, handled over 75 appeals. Lowry's law practice is primarily focused on complex litigation involving prosecution of substantial interstate and international business lawsuits. Larger, he's, he's is well-known personal prosecuting the state's largest real estate partition suit involving the blah, 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 blah. What, who is he he's involved with, right? Here we go. Highlight that. Right there. All right. So the multi the Miami Dade Circuit Court has also appointed Lowy as the court appointed reserver to seize to search out and seize assets, blah blah blah, millions of dollars. Lowry has also served as the litigation counsel 
for the world's largest condominium developer, Crescent Heights Company, and has represented many dozens of multi-million dollar lawsuits on their behalf. So this is the big tell right here. Ronald Lowry received his blah, blah, blah from Miami University. So let's look at who is Crescent Heights Company. <laughs> this, is, this is unbelievable. With over $12 billion in, comp, in completed projects, Crescent Heights has developed extremely cl close relationships with the world's most prestigious financial institutions. Right? Crescent Heights is honored to have access to the most sophisticated and enduring capital providers in the real estate markets. Uniquely positioned, the firm has continuously transformed new opportunities into record setting. So here's the here are the, the look at the bankers. Blackstone, Bank of China, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, City, UBS, Deutsche Bank, Wells Fargo, PNC. Follow the money. U.S. Bank, right? So this guy, these are the, this is the money behind the man. The money behind the man. This is the money behind the man trying to get into the family. Before the lobby, I said I'd be loud, huh? Yes. And, uh, we, we may do a few acts for you, like splish, splash, take in the band. <laughs> Lighten up on the backstroke. <laughs> Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make every day so much fun. <laughs> Live from the city, I mean, flood away. Every day is paradise. And every day for you guys is mountain men. <laughs> $5 buys you 12 tickets, a food processor, a luggage to go to Hawaii with us. We're going to give you the hottest seat in the house with the ring of fire with all these gentlemen tonight. And ladies right now in the hottest seat. How many ladies want to go backstage and rub oil on all the gentlemen tonight? Right now, get a hold of Mr. Jay Rock. You got to come and sing and start the future right there. One ticket for one dollar. Five tickets by you twelve tickets. Get a hold of them right now for the next two minutes, 69 seconds. We're gonna bring them to you live and uncensored right now. So step right up, ladies. Come on down. One ticket for one dollar. Five tickets by you twelve tickets. With all the gentlemen tonight, wrapping off some great prizes. Understand, you take a look at these people, you study these people.